Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Manuela Schmidinger. I am a medical oncologist uh, working at the University in Vienna, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to day two of the ninth European and International Kidney Cancer Symposium. We're going to have very interesting sessions today as well. The sessions yesterday, I believe, were already very well received, and I hope you also had the opportunity to enjoy the beauty of Dublin and to have a few pints of beer of Guinness. Um, so I have an important announcement for you that is uh, relevant for all of those who are going back today. We have decided to cut down the lunch uh, break. So we will be here from, uh, we will have lunch break from 12.20 uh, to 1.20 and we will meet back in the room at 1.30. So we plan to finish the symposium today at 3 p.m. So please bear this in, mind, this in mind that we are going to come back earlier from lunch. And now it's my great pleasure to uh, open the first session, which will be chaired by John Hannan and myself, and it's going to be on systemic treatment of renal cell cancer. Thank you very much, Manuela. My name is John Hannan. I'm a medical oncologist uh, at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam, and I'll be chairing this session. So before starting uh, the session about uh, metastatic uh, uh, renal cell cancer, uh, cancer treatment uh, by uh, uh, systemic treatment, I would like to, uh, to ask for two questions uh, that I would like to discuss with you this morning before we uh, have the first speaker. So the first uh, uh, question is about patient one, a 60-year-old male present, uh, presents with high, uh, right flank pain and nausea. Uh, further, uh, uh, he has no other complaints. Uh, his blood pressure is 120 over 80, and no abnormalities are recorded. His ECOG performance status is zero. Um, looking at laboratory results, they are normal. CT chest abdomen shows an 8 centimeter right renal mass and bilateral pulmonary nodes from 1 to 0.5 to 2.5 centimeters. Bone scan, CT scan of the brain are normal, and he underwent a right nephrectomy, uh, and the histology showed predominantly. Uh, clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Can I? At follow-up visit in eight weeks, uh, he still has a very good performance status, but uh, his chest uh, uh, CT scan shows progression of pulmonary nodes and also uh, a new lesion in his right uh, lung. His labs uh, are still uh, okay, normal hemoglobin, normal platelet counts, neutrophils, calcium is normal, um, and he has a slight elevated uh, keratinin. Uh, his bilirubin, ACID, uh, and ALT are all within the normal range. So, the question. Which of the following treatment alternatives would you recommend to this patient? Continued observation, one. Sunitinib treatment, pazopinib, bevacizumab, uh, uh, combined with interferon if necessary, high-dose interleukin-2, an mTOR inhibitor, uh, for example, temsorolimus, or a uh, clinical trial. And that should be seven, I think. So you can answer now. So the majority of you uh, chose sunitinib. I think sunitinib is still the drug that is mostly used in first line. And that's clearly also the case here. Thank you very much. We go to the second question. This is a 54-year-old uh, uh, woman with a history of nephrectomy for left renal mass, 7.5 centimeters, seven months previously. Histology shows a grade four clear cell carcinoma with sarcomatoid uh, areas, less than 25%. And she presents with weight loss, bilateral chest pains, has a good performance status and uh, normal blood pressure. Uh, she, f she feels chronically ill, but has no further abnormalities. CT scans uh, of chest and abdomen show bilateral uh, two centimeter pulmonary no nodules and a lesion in the liver of 2.5 centimeters. Her CT scan of the brain is normal. Bone scan uh, shows bilateral areas increase uptake in the, in the ribs. Uh, she has an uh, anemia with a hemoglobin of uh, 6.2 millimol per liter. She has uh, elevated platelet counts, normal neutrophils, and elevated uh, LDH. Calcium is normal, 
creatinine is slightly elevated, but the liver function tests are normal. So again, which treatment option would you recommend for this patient? Symptom care only, two, sunitinib, three, bazopinib, four, bevacizumab plus interferon, mTOR inhibitor, or anything else? You can answer now. Can we have the music? Very consistent. Most of you will choose again for sinitinib. Now a little bit more uh, people also will give uh, uh, pazopinib and an mTOR inhibitor because this is uh, a poor risk uh, patient. Very nice. So what we would like to do this morning is discuss the several uh, drugs that are available. We'll start with uh, uh, Camilo Porta uh, from the San Matteo uh, University in Pavia in Italy. And He's going to discuss who is your ideal sinitinib patient. 